Hello, we're here with Don Rivers, who is running for uh, Seattle mayor. Don, would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? Hello, everybody. I'm Don L. Rivers running for Seattle mayor. And uh, I'd like to just thank everybody for this opportunity to meet with you and discuss the issues that are prudent to uh, Mayor Seattle. And I've run for different positions, scored really high, but a lot of times we need to understand something and I've done this uh, through life. One thing that happened to me early in life, my dad removed me from the home and it was because at 14 years old, I had three jobs. So I really, and back in Michigan, so I really didn't need that support. And he was from, from the slavery areas of cotton picking and stuff. So it wasn't anything he thought he could teach me at that point. What I'm saying to you is, it's important that we understand the time period that we're in and uh, deal with the pandemic, the issues that are uh, abreast of us right now, uh, the Black Lives Matter issues, as well as how Seattle can be a city of destiny and lead the rest of the cities of the nation and how to come out of these pandemics and move forward. And I want to support and I want to be the one that bring about new ideas to, to the city of Seattle to make these things happen. And I welcome this opportunity to work with you. Great, thank you so much. So now we'll move into the four prepared questions. Uh, we'll start with question number one. I've just placed that into the chat box. The responses to these questions are two minutes apiece. And um, let me see if I can. Uh, you, I, I can't get to the list. Um, can, I figured out how to get some light. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you so much. Uh, can somebody take question number one? Caitlin, would you do that one, please? Of course, I would love to. Thanks. All right. So what specific actions will you take to address the homelessness crisis in Seattle, both in the short term and long term? And please address land issue, sorry, please address land use, zoning, revenue, regional collaboration, the role of social services, the role of police and justice system. Now that question is loaded. So let's start it with uh, a format. First thing I would look to do is define homelessness. What is the definition of the word homelessness? because there's another word, houseless. Some people that are homeless are there because of different issues. They're not all the same issues. So the first thing that I would look to do in from the area of what has been happening, I think there's a beautiful job being done, but we really have to uh, scale up an opportunity of, of really getting feet and boots on the ground to really find out why people are on the street and love being there. I know some of it is taxation. I know some of it is mental issues and how some of it is being misplaced. So I would look to do a 24 seven um, opportunity to hear what they have to say. A long sit down conversation with my staff and them as to what needs to happen. and. From that, we could move for further. I believe also with law enforcement, I have worked with law enforcement in Seattle on racial profiling with uh, Sheriff Riker and some others over about two decades ago. And we knew this was going to happen. I just didn't know it would be uh, everybody that was involved seconds. in the racial profiling issues. Is that my time's up? Uh, yeah, 30 seconds. You're, you're still, okay. you still have time. So I, I would look to do, uh, an opportunity to work with people to find out ways to make things happen that haven't happened uh, and make sure that we work together to make that where we need it to be. Great, thank you so much. Uh, now for the second question, uh, Mackenzie. Great, okay. Uh, what is your strategy for creating dense and diverse neighborhoods and assuring affordable housing uh, how would you work to dismantle systemic racist arrangements such as redlining, including but not limited to exclusionary zoning and land use policies? And do you support and would you sign city legislation to end single family zoning as uh, Berkeley, California recently did? 
I like that idea that Berkeley had, had has really done, but it's it has a lot to do with density. I believe it has a lot to do with the population that they are occurring. Uh, I think we are really in, intertwined in Seattle with uh, having law enforcement in the middle of criminal justice and social justice issues. So when it comes to zoning, uh, I happen to be a person back when I was 24 years old, I bought a home in the city of Kent and uh, I was redlined out there. Uh, I moved from Seattle to, to get a, a dream home for my wife at that time. And the redlining issue was really strong. It happened too, uh, as I tried out for the Seahawks years ago, where when players come into town, they were redlined out to Bellevue and other areas. So really working with our real estate people and our elected officials to make sure that housing is available for everyone, no matter what the culture or ethnicity is. That would be something that we'd be looking to do that would take some collaboration to make it happen. I also look at the zoning areas of how the neighborhood I'm living in right now, uh, Ballard neighborhood, there are nine construction projects going on with nine different construction companies. There has to be some better way. Uh, the neighbors, my neighbors are complaining about not being able to use the neighborhood properly. So that really has to be looked at, some type of forensic opportunity to there look at it and make sure we do it right. You still have about 20 seconds, Don. You're good. I'm fine. I'm, I'm All right. ready to go for the next one. <laughs> All right. I'll put the next one in the queue. And this one is for Jeff. All right. Uh, would you decrease the Seattle Police Department budget? And if so, by approximately what percentage? What is your plan for the city's SPOG negotiations? And do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? I definitely am going to answer this from the rear to the front. I want law enforcement to be fair. My baby girl used to be in my arms when I did uh, racial profiling with different police departments in Washington state. She is now a state trooper in Tennessee at 38 years old and she's the top of her class, 92 percentile. Uh, I believe that there's a different understanding of law enforcement. The word defund is not the problem. Hey, Don, you, you're muted yourself. Structured. Oh, there you go. Um, and criminal justice is what police are about. Social justice is what we need to create another department to do. And that would be a, a, a serious lift opportunity for our law enforcement officers to do their job correctly. I also believe that law enforcement officers should be in a classroom monthly. They should know the culture, they should know uh, cultural diversity um, and how to work affect people. And that only happens when they have the hours in the classroom where we can get them away from their personal frights, fears, or desires to do things the wrong way. Okay. Along with that, I would work with the police department union to help them understand we have to work together. We must work together. 30 to seconds. Make, so, and, and then having the community involved in such a way, I was the uh, African American Community Advisory Council chair, and I was able to uh, accomplish a lot of these goals uh, the years that I was there as the chair. Great. Thank you. Now we'll move into question number four. And Nicole, would you like to take this one? Here we are. Um, how will you prioritize transportation infrastructure for biking, pedestrians, public transit, commercial vehicles, and cars? Which do you view as most important to prioritize funds for? Uh, actually, by working with the county, I've worked with the county for, I've worked with the county, not the King County, uh, Metro. I worked for 40 years. I just retired January. So uh, I was an inspector for 40 years. So when it comes to transportation, I had the opportunity to support the uh, light rail to the University of Washington. And 
I'm concerned about the area of that's important to me. With y'all have to excuse this bell, but the the area that's important to me is the traffic of people not being able to get around on the freeway on I-5. I would look for a way that our trucks and have a certain time that they need to not be involved in being on the freeway in Seattle. That's that's going to be hard to do, but we can do that. When it comes to pedestrians, I think that the city of Seattle should be open to uh, people in the in bike lanes and those things in such a way that we can move forward. And I would look to work and enhance what's already available. I like the idea that cars have to yield as bikes go by. Uh, we have a lot of deliveries down there in that area. And just to make Seattle downtown more vibrant and bring new revenue in, new opportunities, is something strongly that I look for because I was involved with small business development incubator. I, I put the first one together in, in Washington State. 30 seconds. And that was done under Booth Gartner, Governor Booth Gartner. So looking at ways to make new revenue streams come into Seattle would be very important to me. And a lot, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add this to it, a lot of the demonstrations downtown, that ain't happening. That's not gonna happen that way. I have a special program for that. Great, thank you so much. And so now- uh, I'm so Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Tonight is the night of, of bells and babies. We had a <laughs> candidates with babies that are getting ready for bed. So we get it. Uh, so now we'll move into the uh, follow-up questions and uh, board members can raise their hand to ask those. The responses to these are one minute apiece, and I will look for hands. Do that. Okay, go ahead. All right. Um, let's see. Jeff, go ahead. Sure. Uh, Don, good to see you. We've interviewed you uh, a few times in the past, I think. It's always yeah, good to have you come quit. by. I keep going. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's always good to see you. And I'm wondering, and this actually um, leads to my question, you've um, campaigned so much and I see that kind of as a, as a strength when you're campaigning, you're getting your ideas out, you're meeting a lot of people. I'm wondering what your experience campaigning over the years, like what, if, what, is, what lessons have you learned and how, what would you bring to the mayor's office from those lessons? Over the years, I probably have 25 years of campaigning. I've been an advisor to elected officials, and campaigning. I love Seattle. I love Washington State. I love the people. I've, I've used my own money every time and made it work. And so what I think I bring is the vibrance of understanding all people. I've traveled the world. I've been a, a, peace, uh, a peace coordinator, uh, an ambassador for 25 years. I've been to Korea, North Korea, South Korea, Germany, Russia, China, Japan, Africa, all of West Africa. And all the leaders that I've met have been willing to have an understanding of how to deal with other cultures. What I bring is the vibrant opportunity for us to find ways to work together as a people. Seconds. And I believe Seattle's ready for that salad bowl melting pot to get to the point where we can digest some of the culture all of our cultures. I would love to put together a cultural parade, a parade of culture, and That's have that. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, so we have an environment committee, and so I'll ask their question. It's uh, how would you use this office to address climate justice, ensuring a healthy environment, and access to climate supporting solutions. Uh, such as a multimodal mo model, I'm sorry, multimodal clean transportation options? Well, we have to get ready for the next 20 to 30 years. And that is bringing on electric vehicles. Um, like being in transit, I understand this because I was there when we first got the transit buses that were electric. And I was there when we had the old 200s with put clouds of uh, smoke all in the air when we crank them up in the morning. I'm an environmental person. I, I love the fish. I love the waterways. I don't like the coal trains. We will look, I would look to do some things to make sure that when they go through, we don't harm our environment. 
when they go through our town, our city. Uh, the EPA has a lot to do with homelessness. Seconds. And that homelessness piece is a land usage piece. I definitely want to get that resolved because we need to build an opportunity where everyone's accepted. But remember, people may be homeless, but they still must be some type of a taxpayer. We need that revenue. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other follow up questions? Uh, Mackenzie, go ahead. And then Sherry after that. Oh, Sherry can go first. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Sherry. Okay, um, so as mayor, one of your big jobs is to um, uh, build a budget for the city. So can you describe what your experience is in preparing and managing budgets? Um, what are the keys? Um, what do you think the keys are to a successful budget for the public sector? I, I would say the first thing is a forensic audit of all departments to know exactly where the revenue streams, weaknesses and, and, and strengths are in every department. I know that housing is a very tough area in Seattle and it needs to be vetted, it needs to be stronger. I, I would say, I remember uh, Secretary Ernie Duncan and Senator Patty Murray put one of my organizations over a, a, a education format called Race to the Top. And at that time, our organization was involved with $8.7 billion worth of grants. And our, our opportunity was to go around to schools in Seattle area and make sure they were prepared for that, uh, receiving those grants. Uh, working with the Nordstrom family- 15 seconds. And the Pay and Safe Corporation, I was able to take uh, department stores that were in the red and get them in the black. Uh, also being a- an overseer and archbishop over 43 churches nationwide. I've been able to keep their budgets online too during the pandemic period times. So that's some things that I think that would be very exciting to work on. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, so my question is, uh, the city of Tacoma just recently passed uh, a, an ordinance where they're going to start a, a pilot program for universal basic income. And uh, while a lot of that is going to be funded privately, um, I'm curious if that's something you would be interested in trying to implement in Seattle. And if so, uh, how would you go about paying for that? Now, there are gonna be flies on the wall when I say this stuff, and I don't like that, but I have to do it. Number one, I look at Amazon and I see them offering jobs with Microsoft. And I see young people going to college, getting their degrees coming out, but they have a student loan. So if they have a $100,000 job, it just dropped down to 80,000 or 60,000 because they need to pay their bills that they accumulated getting that degree. I think the place to look here is to make sure that we are, that we are at the forefront of looking at opportunities for everyone and making sure that they happen. So opening the doors of seeing what has happened in the past and probably adding some amendments to those exactly. that I would do uh, to make sure that Seattle moves forward in the, in the proper direction. Thank you. Any further questions? I have one last one. Um, so although uh, the mayor wouldn't lead uh, Seattle Public Schools, um, how, how would you support its leadership? The first thing the Seattle Public Schools need to have is a summit. The issues need to come out. I, as mayor, I would look to support the parents, the mothers that have lost their jobs. I would look to ask corporations to give some type of subsidy for the loss that has happened between the parent, the parent having to lose their job and homeschool. The other thing would be I think most parents that have done this are substitute teachers. That's the way I look at it. I would look to see if we can find a way with the school board to work effectively with parents that must now stay at home with their children and must do the, the uh, Zoom classes at the same time. Because we have to get our young people forward to understand that they need to be on campus and off campus at the same time. I would do the same thing with our small businesses. There needs to be a scattered on and off three day a week 
opening and closing so every one of our businesses can be vibrant as like the school districts needs to be the same way. Great, thank you so much. And that is our, uh, we're close to time. So would you like to go ahead and give a one minute wrap up? Someone asked me, uh, one of you asked me, what have I gotten from campaigning so much? I love getting things accomplished. It hasn't been, and those that are looking for the mayor's position for a salary, they missed the point. Seattle, if Seattle is not functioning, Washington State is lost. Seattle leaves Washington State. I know I've been up to the White House and got awards, and I know how important Seattle is to the Northwest. I'm saying to all of you, I believe I found a spot that I can help Seattle move forward. I've given Seattle the first African-American mayor, Norm Rice. And at that time, we were looking to do some things. Some of it got accomplished, some of it didn't. The opportunity to be vibrant and have small business work with major corporations is an opportunity of bringing And right now in Seattle, Washington, we need new revenue streams. I'm gonna make that happen. And I need your vote and support I thank every one of you, all my mentors. I thank them for this opportunity to help me understand who I am and whose I am. Thank you. I need your vote. Great. Thank you.